talk about this. Bob Cusack is here, editor in chief at the at the Hill. We're also joined uh, on the right by radio talk show host Malik Abdullah, and from the left, News Nation contributor Chris Hahn, who's going to be saying "I told you so," but he won't be the only one. And Bob, I actually want to start with you because to that point, I don't think anybody really thought that Matt Gates, of all people, was going to be confirmed in a vote in the United States Senate. But remember, we were having this conversation that if Trump wanted them to be his AG, he would just jam people like that through using what they call recess appointments. But I guess that's not an option anymore. What happened to that? You know, the more you look into it, the more I've looked into it, it's just very difficult to do it mm. uh, as far as forcing uh, Congress to go into a recess. Both chambers actually would have to support it, would rub senators, obviously, the wrong way. And uh, a soon-to-be Senate me, uh, Majority Leader John Thune said, listen, uh, maybe we can, you know, kind of saying, well, maybe we can do uh, recess nominees for, for lower-down people like deputies, but for the main ones, we want to go through the normal process. Uh, so, listen, uh, this, this was never going to—he was never going to pass. Maybe right. some people thought it was a shiny object so the other ones could pass. But eight days? I mean, I, I don't know if that strategy is going to work now because he's gone. He's gone. That's it. Um, Malik, you, we put it up again what yeah. uh, Donald Trump had to say on, on social media uh, about him. I greatly appreciate the recent efforts for Gates in seeking the approval to be attorney general. He was doing well. But at the same time, did not want to be a distraction for the administration, which he has so much respect. And he says he has a wonderful future. I, I do think, Malik, though, that one of the things this brings up about Trump 2.0 is that, remember, before the election, people said, well, if he wins, who, who's Trump going to have surrounding him? Will he have just a bunch of yes men and women? Who's going to say no when he brings up something like this? And I got to think, who did say no? Or who, who stopped him or, or should have stopped him, Malik, when he said, Matt Gates is my AG? I mean, nobody must have thought that was a good idea at the time. Well, I'll just say my initial thoughts when hearing this is, oh, happy day, oh, happy day. <laughs> Why? Because you can move that on Matt's now. Because you can move on. That is, well, that Matt Gates has now gone away. I'm actually, I've said on this show before, and as you just alluded to, many people didn't think <laughs> that uh, Matt Gates was ultimately going to get through, and he didn't. This sounds to me, and I don't have any inside knowledge. This sounds to me like a, neat, a a decision that Donald Trump made at the last minute. It does not sound like a decision that a Susie Wiles was involved in. You could probably say that for a number of the right. other picks. This sounds like one of Donald Trump's gut picks. But I just wanted to say for those people who were for Matt Gates and attacking people who were not for Matt Gates, Donald Trump got 67 million votes. Not all of those 60, 70, I'm sorry, 76 million people will agree with every single decision that Donald Trump does. And I and right. many other people like me represent the millions of people who just did not think that Matt Gates was a bet. It was a good pick. So we're glad that he's gone. Now, I told you Chris was going to say I told you so and that he wouldn't be the only one. But he was on this show on Friday, Chris Hahn. And here's what he said. I'm a big believer the president gets the team they want unless there's a serious problem with them. I think there's a serious problem with Matt Gates. I do not believe he will be confirmed. I do not believe he will be surviving much longer. I think by Thanksgiving, he'll be gone. All right, Chris, your Thanksgiving come earlier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I thought he would use the media blackout of the Wednesday before Thanksgiving to gracefully exit. So he couldn't even get that right. So, uh, but that's fine. Look. The Senate is supposed to be the cooling saucer of the Republic. If the people wanted a wrecking ball, the, uh, the Senate's supposed to say, no, how about we just remodel a little? And I think that's what's going on here, right? Matt Gates went to the Senate yesterday with the vice president-elect, and it was really not working out for him, right? You, you played the, the package of the senators, some of them even denying they even met with him, right? Some of them probably wouldn't want to meet with him. Um, I think he, it was a bridge too far for the Senate, and I think that's a victory for a little bit of normalcy uh, coming our way the next four years, because that is what the Senate is supposed to do. It is supposed to cool the passions of the people. That's mm -hmm. why the founders put him there, and that's why a guy like Matt Gates was never getting through. That's why Tulsi Gabbard's probably going to have a problem, and that's why Pete Hegseth's probably going to pro have a problem. But I think, for the most part, the president will get most of his cabinet, and, 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 and I think he should get most of his cabinet, Barring these kinds of extreme people he puts in there. So goodbye, Matt Gates. I, I, I don't think that, you know, family values Republicans right. were really going to want to see what was in that report. And the drip, 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 drip that was coming this week was just too much. All right, let's talk about what's next here, right, uh, Bob? And, you know, some people are talking about what's next for Matt Gates. I, it might be intriguing or interesting and not important as who 
uh, Donald Trump will pick here uh, to be his attorney general uh, designate the second time around. I mean, it, it, the uh, deputy AG is his, or the one nom the person nominated yeah. is his own personal lawyer, right? And Todd Blanche, or, you know, I know yep. there were names like Senator Lee thrown around in the past, or Matt Whitaker's already got the NATO nomination, but I, I wonder where he goes. Or right. w any names we're hearing other than that, or, or any names we're hearing at all right uh, now? Those two names and other names that's out there is Andrew Bailey, the Attorney General of Missouri. So, uh, but regardless of who he picks, uh, he's got to get the next one right. Uh, and it's got to be uh, obviously a Trump loyalist because Trump demands that, was not pleased with Senator Jeff Sessions as his Attorney General. Uh, but he's got, to, he's got to have somebody who gets a majority of votes uh, in the Senate after this debacle. Um, you know, th this is a hit on, on the incoming administration, and they don't want another one. Well, the other one, and Malika, I wonder what you think of this, was already brought up by Chris, is what about some of these other nominees? Tulsi Gabbard is the DNI, but what about Pete Hegseth, who's been on the Hill today? He's Trump's pick to be the uh, Secretary of Defense, and there's this police report now that's been released concerning an incident that took place in, in 2017, um, where uh, Hegseth was involved in what he says was a consensual relationship with a woman at a hotel. She says otherwise, and in the police report, we'll put up a part of it from this woman who's a Jane Doe in the report. She says, and here you see it, Hegseth took her phone from her hands, and Jane Doe uh, stated that uh, she got up, she tried to leave the room, and it was a hotel room, but Hegseth blocked the door with his body. Jane Doe remembered saying no a lot. Jane Doe stated she did not remember much else. Uh, what about Pete Hegseth, Malik? It seems as if Pete Hexeth is actually having a much better time than Matt Gates. Um, they don't have to really hold their nose and support someone like um, uh, like they would have if they had to vote for Matt Gates. Uh, these accusations, at the end of the day, this is something that um, Hexeth denied. You know, we've kind of been here before. At least in this case, there was a police report filed. But remember the Brett Kavanaugh hearings where Brett Kavanaugh was accused of crime that he allegedly committed back in high school. So these type of accusations do come up. It doesn't mean that these accusations are actually true. This is something he's denied, and I think that he's paid off. Uh, they made some type of financial settlement. But at the end of the day, I don't think that Pete Hegseth nor Tulsi Gabbard will have as hard of a time being confirmed as a Matt Gates would. You agree with that, Chris? You don't, right, from what you said earlier? No. No, look, Pete Hegg said, forget about his personal problems. He's not qualified to be leading one of the largest, you know, agencies in the world. And Donald Trump is going to learn, and he's, all, I think, probably already learned this week, that political capital is not an endless supply, right? And what does he want to spend to get Pete Hegseth confirmed at the DOE? Uh, it's going to cost him a lot. And then he won't have that political capital for other things he may want down the road. So I, I think that Donald Trump's not dumb. I know that Susie Wilde's not dumb. And I know that they're going to do the math here. And Pete Hegg said is not going to be the, the, not going to be the defense secretary. Uh, he will also withdraw before a hearing because the hearing is going to suck. They are not going to be happy with what comes out in the hearing. <laughs> and, and, and his record is not good. And, and you know, look, uh, I, I, I've been hearing stories that I don't want to repeat because I don't know if they're true. We all have mutual friends with Pete Hegseth, right? So it is, it, 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 some of that stuff's going to come out. And, and it, it's not going to be pretty for the administration. And now that Matt Gates is not taking all the bullets for him, there's going to be a lot of right. focus on him. And it's not going to be good. Final thing here, I think there's a lot of focus as well, Bob, on one other pick. I wonder if we'll get it today or tomorrow, and that's the Treasury Secretary. You can put up some of the names that have been floated around there by, by Trump. It's been interesting to see the back and forth on this. Warsh is a former Fed official. Rowan's a private equity guy at Apollo. Uh, Senator Haggerty's name coming up more and more. I don't think Lighthizer necessarily has a shot, but Besant might is the investor who Trump really, really likes. Uh, what are we hearing about that? And anything on timing? It's interesting that it hasn't come out yet. It is interesting because this was the economic week. So yeah. uh, we expected and have gotten a couple, uh, but we're expecting Treasury Secretary. Obviously, the week's not over yet, but but watch the senator's name. I think he could be one to watch. And, mm -hmm. and remember, uh, whoever takes that position has got to pass an extension of the Trump tax cuts and expand right. them. And, and maybe having a, uh, a senator, a former senator, would be a good idea. Yep, former ambassador, former senator, a guy also has a private equity background in his, um, in, in his private life before being in in politics. So yeah, you might be right about that. We'll see. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Malik. Much more on all of this breaking news as we continue. And here's